There's this display of classic model kits at the British Motor Museum, but many of them have seen better days, so I offered my services to fix them. Here's how I got on. As you can see here, many of them, like this Ford Model T, were falling apart as soon as you picked them up. I gave it a light blow to remove some of the loose dust, and then went over it with a glasses cleaning cloth. This one's from Boots, and some opticians will give you these for free. I wouldn't recommend using any cleaning product, as that might affect the paintwork or the glue. It's important to remove the delicate parts firstly, so as to not damage any of them. This was built in a fairly robust way. The next step is to go over it with a damp cotton bud. This is particularly useful in places like the seats, which have got lots of little crevices. You can see here how much dust there is on these leather effect seats. I'm wiping the seats down first and then I'll do the floor afterwards. Both of these brown areas have attracted quite a lot of dust over the years. This is an Airfix 132nd kit which was built probably in the 50s or 60s. You can see here, I think I've improved that quite a bit already. I'm sanding down some of the glue remnants on this front section here, the where the radiator will go. The builder has painted under here, which doesn't need paint, as you can see. Most of the gold sections still look quite nice, but anywhere where there are chips, I added a little bit of Tamiya. So here just test fitting the front wheels fit in there underneath. So then use a bit of Tamiya extra thin cement, which probably wasn't even invented when this was built, to fit into those small gaps. And then secure the front axle underneath. To help that glue in place, I just turn it over to let it set and then start working on the other parts of the car. The kit is missing one of its hubs on the rear wheels, so to help them match the other as best as possible, I just give it a little bit of gold paint. Once clean and dust free, I use a little bit of Tamiya Semi Gloss Clear to paint the seats to give them a little bit of a protective coating and also a more realistic leather look. As the wheels have quite a few narrow spokes, I use this dry paintbrush to remove any loose dust from it. I add a little bit of super glue to the inside of the wheel that was missing a hub to make sure that it was securely attached to the car. Unfortunately, there was only one headlight, but I had to make do with what we had. I added a little bit of silver to the inside of that, and I also added a little bit of black panel line accent to the radiator, which is only partly done here. The steering wheel was also very loose, so I drilled open the opening where it needs to fit in, cleared it up with a little bit of paint on any scratches, and then replaced it. Now, it looks pretty good so far at this point, but I thought I could make it look even better. I painted the windscreen surround in Tamiya Gold Acrylic to make it look more like the real car. 
So with some hyper polish from Kent Models, cotton buds and also a little buffing cloth, I went around a few places where I knew I could bring out that enamel shine from nearly 70 years ago. As you can see here, already starting to look much, much better. There was a lot of dirt and grime sort of in the sort of surface level of the paint, so this is the equivalent of giving it a bit of a tea cut, removing the outer layer of paint and just bringing it back to that sort of shine that it had all those years ago. Didn't want to do this too hard as I didn't want to burn through the paint, but as you can see here on the door, which I've done, uh, the bodywork I haven't, you can really see how much it's improved the look of the car. And there it is finished. Not perfect, but still a lot closer to how it looked 50 years ago. As you can see here, I worked on many, many cars during the two days that I was there, and you can see that some of them ended up looking a lot better and certainly a lot shinier than they did at the beginning. I tried not to replace too many missing parts, but I cleaned up a bit of paint and certainly gave them a polish, which really brought out the shine in that enamel paintwork. Thank you very much for watching, and thank you so much to the British Motor Museum. Please do visit them. There's a link to their website in the description down below. Thanks a lot for watching. Leave a comment down below. Have you built any of these kits? And I'll see you soon.